Hello everyone, welcome to Moviola. My name is Thomas and I'm here today to walk us through a couple of tips and techniques on how to create fake 3D looks in After Effects. Now, why fake it? There's plenty of tools to create uh, like actual 3D within After Effects. You can uh, extrude, you can go into Cinema 4D Lite, you can, you know, set it up now there's a there's a couple of reasons why you know you might not want to do this number one this is me included I'm not that great at uh, understanding <laughs> 3d uh, there's you know the cameras there's the lights there's kind of the camera blur that you have to uh, deal with and you know sometimes I just don't want to mess with that uh, it also saves on rendering time to to not have to do a full like 3D model. Uh, helps out with you and your work uh, work efficiency. And you know, there's also just some looks that are preferable. Maybe it's a simple 3D look. Maybe it's a you know just a simple effect that you need. You know, there's plenty of ways to create that 3D effect without fully creating a uh, full 3d model so let's get into it let's let's see what after effects can do for us uh, in that respect a great place to start is layer styles now what are layer styles they are these things they basically mimic uh, shading and highlights to create a 3d type of look now we're gonna look at a couple so if you're unfamiliar all you have to do is right click go to layer styles and they're all right here for you uh, I've, I've picked out a few from here just to kind of give us a, give us examples of what what they do so inner shadow right here on our bare uh, text layer pretty much does exactly that within the text layer uh, there's a shadow here let me open up the settings and toggle it off so that's what it's creating and as you can see it's really using the alpha information the the you know the tech uh, or the shape of the text to inform what kind of shadow it's doing. It's it's very obvious right here on the more sharp uh, corners. And you know, for now, to be consistent, I kind of tried to set all the angles at the same 135 degrees, distance five, tried to turn off all the softness just so that we can see what what's going on but if we turn up the size we can see you know a little bit better what this effect is trying to go for now it really does look like the shadow is being cast on a layer underneath this you know paper background layer right now you can this this effect works because of our basic understanding of how lighting and shade works where we have an expectation that light comes from the top so when you're looking at this you're seeing you're seeing the shadows right up top here and right on the bottom here because it's implied that the light is coming from this way now if we switch this to white and screen now we see there's a highlight instead of a shadow kind of right here and now this has more of the look of uh, something that's popping out at you rather than something that's sunken in you see how that works uh, fun fact that's actually what the effect is for the Haunted Mansion busts 
in the line if you have if you have ever uh, ridden that ride. They're actually like concave sculptures, and they're lit from below, so it looks like a normal statue, but it that's how they look like they follow you around. It's pretty cool. All right, moving on. On our monkey, we have an inner glow. Now, again, by default, I think this uh, comes with white screen rather than a black multiply. So it kind of looks like that. And it, you know, it, you, it does kind of the same thing where it takes the alpha information, but instead of offsetting the shape, it just creates this glow from the edges. So let's set it back to black and see what that does. And it, it you can see kind of, it looks more like it's lit straight on because all the shadows are even. It's not favoring one direction or another. Uh, and yeah, so that's that. Another great one is the bevel. Bevel is, again, kind of the same thing as that uh, inner shadow uh, layer style but it's doing both of the things that we did meaning it's giving a highlight up here and a shadow down here now it's up and that's because of what we were talking about how it's assume it's allowing us to assume that the light is coming from the top and you can see right here the direction is up but if we switch it to down all that happens is that highlight switches so the highlight is down here, the shadow is up here. Real simple, yeah? Now, next is satin. Now satin's a weird one, because uh, it's basically doing exactly what the inner shadow is doing, but doing it twice from opposite sides. So we see the, uh, the inner shadow has the shape offset this way and going up and to the left that way. If we see again right here on the corners, it that's how you can kind of tell what the shadow is doing or what the layer style is doing. And when both of these shapes intersect, they kind of, you know, subtract from each other, right? Now, it looks weird <laughs> to be fair. And what exactly is going on? Well, if we increase the size a little bit, there. Now we can see a little bit better what is going on. It does have that like matte effect here. This is 100%. It has that matte effect. And what's nice is it has these directional highlights that are not even. So, you know, it gives a little bit more texture that way, right? And last but not least, drop shadow. Drop shadow, pretty simple, right? It's doing exactly what that inner shadow is doing, but instead of casting the shadow within the layer, it's casting it behind it. So again, let me put it here. Uh, let's increase the distance just to hammer in that point right so again the lights coming from here uh, hitting this and casting the shadow behind it on the layer behind it um, and then let's just increase the size just to give it a little bit more reality All right great so listen these are very simple, very easy. If, you, if you've ever uh, played around in Photoshop, these might be familiar to you. And, you know, sometimes they're enough to get the job done, right? But other times, these are just 
basic basic effects that we can use as a start to how we want to create our overall uh, 3d look All right now let's get a little deeper into this uh, shading because with all with all that it's able to do the layer cells are a little bit limited so let's let's look at something that's a little bit more uh, you know free range I guess here we have a sphere or at least what looks like a sphere that I've put basically uh, just a gradient and created a shadow for let's dig in here and really see what's happening now for the shadow let's just hide it for now for our sphere what you see is there's an ellipse path with which is defining the shape a fill path which is defining the color and a gradient fill that's defining this gradient right here now you can obviously do away with this color and just color the actual gradient but I figure separating them out really makes it easier to change up the color of the ball without having to mess with uh, two values and trying to match them let's get something nice great now let's look at the gradient fill a little bit um, this is a radial fill with the start point right here and the highlight kind of up top here it's the same you know the same concept where we're assuming there's a light coming from the top and if that were the case, then there would be a highlight up here. There would be shade down here. And, you know, uh, the, the shape of the shading would be circular like this. So this is a close enough approximation for, you know, a real quick and dirty test. Uh, but uh, I did something else. I added a little bit of a bounce. So as you can see, uh, I animated uh, the ellipse path to bounce. And just in case there is, just in case you're wondering, there is an expression using Duic. Uh, if you don't know what Duic is, look look on the site. We have a tutorial for it, and it's really cool. And it's a really cool like assistant for animation and it's free so yeah go get it why not okay now uh, just to add an additional kind of thing to the shading of this uh, sphere what I've done is I've attached I've uh, written an expression that attaches the start point which is this point of the gradient to the position of the ellipse so it's the position of the ellipse plus a value just so that I can adjust it here and it'll still stick you see that now I didn't do that for this dark side of the gradient right here just because when it goes higher you'll see this bottom part lightens up because the dark uh, part of the gradient is down here which is simulating you know it being further from the ground so it's not casting as much of a shadow like more light is able to get to this part And that just comes from, you know, like thinking about what what's happening to an object in a 3D space and trying to re recreate it. Uh, the only other thing that's missing would be a shadow that it's casting on the surface below. 
So here you can see uh, it's another ellipse path. Let's see what's happening. Uh, and this is just hooked up. So in case we want to, you know, increase the size of the path, you'll see this shape is increasing as well. Uh, so the path, the gradient fill, just a simple uh, one from the middle out that it's both uh, both black but the opacity is what's uh, creating the gradient so it's going from 80 percent in the middle to zero percent at the end just to have that nice fall off and then in addition to that we've also added a scale expression so that the further away uh, the position is from this origin point the more it scales down you see that so it's higher up so the x uh, x-axis scale is the smallest, the narrowest, and then as it lands, it's the widest. So this is just an example of what you can do manipulating uh, just the layers to create, you know, a, a facsimile of 3D. I might not be using that word right. Okay, let's move on to bevels. Now, bevels uh, is a layer style, but is also there's a couple of different effects that can achieve a 3D look. Now, I'm gonna preface this by saying this is more of an experimentation on my part, just to see what things, how things look, what things do. Uh, and I picked out these three uh, effects plastic, CC glass, and CC blobby lies. So let's go through them one by one and kind of see what's happening here. With plastic, it seems to kind of pick up on this slight highlight that I put on here. Oh, and let me just show you. On this text dot, uh, on this text layer, I put the inner glow layer style precise to give it this like little bit of an inner highlight, and that's what the CC plastic is picking up on and creating this little, you know, cutout, which is pretty cool. Now, next up is glass. And it's kind of, you know, the more the more and more I play with glass, the more futzing around that needs to be happening. Because, see, that's kind of the look I usually try to go for. There's a there's a nice little again it's that highlight right here. Not so much shading, but maybe more like soft shading. But you can see it's a little bit on on the inside of the layer. So it really, there's a realism that it's contributing more than the just the layer style itself. And then Blobby Lies, which is doing that, which is cool. But again, kind of <laughs> don't super understand. There's these little, you know, little highlights, little shades. It really, it kind of looks like it's using the text layer and putting putting it in glass or something and if we add these two together there was where is it <laughs> if we kind of play around with this well I don't know 
I mean, it all looks cool. There's... You might be asking, like, where am I getting this info from? There's a great tutorial by Video Copilot that kind of goes through this, uh, these effects and shows you, like, really a great way to simulate, you know, fantasy or adventure type titles. So let me just show you at least a little bit of the potential. So what we've done here is we've created a text layer to use as a mask and put in, if we open this up, this uh, background picture to you to drive the colors and the shapes that are being reflected within this glass. Within the text bevel, you'll see it's another layer. We put in we put on a couple of different layer styles here. Let's let's do this. All right, we're back. So this text bevel is driving how the CC glass is manipulating this text shape, right? So as we can see here, we put on the satin effect. If we hide that and just the regular black and white, that's kind of how uh, it comes out. You can see it's just flat and the, the text is popping up right here. If we turn on the bevel and emboss, you know, it does that. <laughs> you can kind of see it's using this shading right here to create a little bit like soft edge but I found if we use the inner glow it ha it creates these you know good highlights that are creating these you know points uh, where it's raising it, uh, the edges of the text is raising and kind of meeting right here, right? If we go back to our CC bevel, let's close this out, see our flower square, this is what's happening. It's a CC glass and blobby lies and just curves to uh, adjust the color a little bit, make it a little brighter. But, you know, we can play around with the displacement of it if we want it more, you know, if we want the image to be more clear or less the height of the actual the glass coming up there's a lot of things to do let's reset that back and yeah again video copilot look look up this tutorial maybe we'll put the link in below it's a great tutorial just to really hone in on creating a realistic 3D title. Alright, let's move on to shapes. Now, in addition to the glass and the plas CC plastic and CC blobby lies, there's a ton of different uh, effects and presets that we can use to mimic 3D. There's plenty here, I'm just gonna call out uh, two of them right now. One is CC Sphere and the other is CC Cylinder. I'm sure, you know, honestly if you search CC anything, I don't exactly know what it means, but it looks like there's a lot of very cool uh, s simulations that it creates. One I use a ton is this uh, CC page turn, which basically you apply it to a layer. Here, let's do it right now real quick. And just to hide those, put CC page turn on here. And you see you get a handle that you can manipulate this page. And now this is a little big, so let's scale it down make the back opacity none and you can see 
we can animate this as a page turn. Pretty cool. And very specific, as is this. Let's scale this up again. Now, all you're doing is you're taking that flat image. It can be a JPEG. I just put it into a composition because it's nicer. The, the image doesn't get stretched out as much when you, because it's meant to create a sphere from a more horizontal. I believe a two to one ratio might be ideal. But, you know, play around with it to create this, right? And we can rotate it. What's great, what I've used it for is uh, you just take a flat image of the world, like a map of the world, just the continents and whatever. Because uh, this even works on PNGs and it respects the alpha channel of it. So that even better because you can see through the uh, globe. And then, yeah, you create a like, nice spinning world out of it. Another CC shape is a cylinder. Let's see how that looks. Let's decrease this radius a little bit and rotate it. Now, yeah, it is a little small. Anyway. But you can do cool stuff like this, create like little tunnels. Uh, if you were to use kind of a star shape or uh, a layer with just a bunch of stars or something or colors even and just rotate it this way and then just keep rotating it, animating the rotation this way. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do. All right, that was a nice little tangent. Let's go on to the repeater. So for now, we've been looking at kind of how shading uh, works for 3D effects, how we can use different effects that come with After Effects to really create a 3D effect. Now, let's look at the repeater, which uh, I thought is kind of a cool way to create a simple sort of 3D. Now, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to walk you through this, so let's erase this. Uh, and create a text layer. Let's say that's a good one. Eagle. Eagle's great. Let's. Yeah, sure. Let's put this down to 200 though first. This is good because we'll get a lot of nooks and crannies that are going to look weird initially. Let's do that color. Yeah. All right. Now, the what you saw was an implication of depth without the shading really. I mean, we we made it darker just to just so that it's easier to look, see? Uh, but let's see how to do that. So, first of all, unfortunately, it doesn't it only the repeater effect only works on shape layers so we're gonna right click and create shapes from this text now what that did was create another layer and this is where all the shapes are but it preserved the text layer which is nice we're gonna actually use that put that on top and hide that for now let's drag down now each You'll see here each uh, letter is its own shape with its own stroke and fill. Let's, to make things easier for us, let's move these stroke, this stroke and fill outside. 
and erase all the other ones. What this is going to do is uh, just allow us to control the stroke and fill for each layer with just this one instead of having to go in individually and change each one which you know you can do uh, if you wanna have a different color for each shape but you know for now let's not do that doop 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 great uh, now we're gonna keep the stroke invisible and let's change the fill a little darker just so that we can see the difference this was the previous this was current that's pretty good now we're gonna go over here click add repeater and what the repeater does uh, if we can kind of zoom in right here it creates it repeats the shape pretty simple here we have three copies it's a little bit mm, let's let's look at these we have three copies right and they're both or they're all offset by a hundred pixels so this is where we can start manipulating where these copies go okay eventually we want this kind of effect right so let's add in a null put it right here let's say and we're gonna use the position data of well this text layer that you can see right here it's slightly lighter than everything else and this null so what we want to do is find the difference so that we can kind of define this right S which means we have to subtract this position data from this position data and we'll do that with expressions uh, very simple so hold alt click position and then we're just gonna pick what oh actually let's open up these two positions just to make things easier and then you know what We'll do that. Great. So we're going to pick whip the null position x and then subtract the text position x. Let's change this to X. Let's change this to X. And we'll change this to Y. And then we'll copy this. Hmm. There we go. Put a Y. Oh, you know what? That's, what? that's what's happening. Change the X to Y. Change all the zero positions to 1. And let's see what we did. Great, kind of working. Oh, and just to let's uh, parent that to the eagle just so that we can move this. And yeah, so you'll see this is the anchor point here. Here's the null. And the null is doing what we're asking it to, but what we actually want is for all the uh, repeated copies to be in between the null and the base layer. Right now that it's only doing the one and then it's gonna start keep repeating off into the distance. So let's fix that. How do we fix that? I'm gonna tell you right now. We're gonna take this whole equation and add 
a division sign and pick whip copies now what this is going to be doing oh wait just to be clean let's add parentheses what this is doing is basically saying I want the position to be I want the position to be controlled by this null but divided between uh, each copy so that it creates copies uh, so that the eventual position will be in between I hope I uh, explained that well well let's let's add this to this great so really yeah I hope this is coming across again what you're doing is you're basically inputting this value and then dividing it by how many copies there are meaning it creates this as the driver and to even show it more fully let's up the f copies to 50 and yeah there it is looks pretty nice now if we go back to three you'll see maybe you want one right here that's easy you can just offset it by one and there you go all right so the problem here is you really just are gonna have to increase the copies to to get rid of these little annoying little nuggets or you might want to keep them it looks kind of cool now great pretty cool but to add one more layer of depth let's do this let's back to 50 when when you're using the repeater it takes the information from the previous uh, copy and just keeps adding on to it so if you want it if you want the text to look like it's coming out at you that means each repeated copy needs to be a little bit smaller than the one before so what we can do is we can change the scale percentage from 100 percent to 99 oh there we go let's change this back to 20 just to be a little bit more subtle and now we have pretty decent you know looking like flat uh, type of depth where this extrusion is all one color and again there we go from this fill we can you know change it to whatever we'd like we can even make it lighter yeah that no, looks weird and it just looks you know elegant and we didn't have to spend too much time at all and it's pretty simple to control cool let's look an at another uh, version of this and you kinda kinda seeing a preview right here that version is called parallax now parallax is just I'm gonna let this play real quick. Now, parallax is a concept. Okay, we've all been in cars. Have you ever looked outside your car window and seen the road right by you whipping by, the trees right past the road, kind of going by but at a slower pace? then the buildings and the mountains off in the distance kind of slowly passing by and then 
behind it the sky and the clouds just not moving at all well that's what uh, parallax is and that's kind of how we perceive depth in an environment right because as we're moving the further away an object is the the less they appear to move to us uh, because we're just farther away and they're you know our our vision is kind of like cone shaped so relative to the things very close to us those things are going to look like they're moving slow slower so here is kind of how I'm trying to uh, recreate that phenomenon. I, I just did it with textures and stuff to to hide the little the edges between each shape. So I added, if you see, a turbulent displace and a fractal noise just to mask kind of what's going on here. And the effect is you do feel like there's a there's depth to this and we're kind of moving from one side to the other now if we look if we zoom out and kind of look at all these uh, layers and just scrub through that's all we did uh, we just created one keyframe on this side one keyframe on this side and just uniformly moved. So, if, yeah, you see if I scrub back and forth, it kind of looks like there's movement there. Mm, let's 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 apply a real world like scenario instead of this blobby Alex Mack stuff. So, I created this uh, mountain scene. Let's just copy these and paste them here. There's nothing to this. It's just, uh, if you see this, they're just, you know, different layers that we created in Illustrator. All we're going to do is we're just going to parent these. So let's parent this night sky. This gray solid was the one furthest back so it's the one that moved the least so let's parent that to him let's parent the mountain let's do let's do this guy and then the trees uh, they're close to the mountain so they'll be a little closer there and then the ground let's do let's let's go for this the closest one now, I'll let this render, and then we can see what we got. And look at that. Doesn't that look somewhat convincing? I mean, you can see the difference in, in movement between the stars, the mountains. You can see right here, there's a little bit of depth, and we gave the ground a little bit of texture just so that you can see it really actually moving and yeah it's a nice little effect simple to do and really gives you if you if you apply it correctly it really gives you that illusion that you're looking out a window you know? great so I got one more example to show you guys that's a little bit of a combination of all the techniques we've uh, discussed. Mm, well, not really. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Let me just show you first. So this is a just a 3D coin that we're using layers to offset and create a little bit of depth, uh, layer styles to create these things, and then a mask to create the shine. 
So let's go step by step real quick. Let's turn off the shine for a second and go into just this bronze metal movement. What I've done is just created a bunch of different layers uh, to kind of stack on top of each other and create this look, right? And put an expression on the scale so that if you watch these values, the Y value stays the same. The X value is the one that's squishing in and out. Now, you'll see there's a certain point where it starts at 80, goes up to 100, and then goes back down to 80. Now, how do you, if you watch this, it feels like it's looking to the right, and this feels like it's looking to the left. Now, how do you kind of do that? Well, you offset a couple of layers. Now, you'll see this one is, we just generated a slider to make it easier for me. But this is what's controlling everything. This is what has the keyframes on it. So, if you look at the, these are the shape layers that we created. Let's just go down to the basic coin, which is this. You'll see this is all it's doing. Yeah. And the back, which we're offsetting to either make it look left or right. So if we hide this real quick. So at 40, it's on this side. And at negative 40, it's on that side. And that can really influence the way you think it looks like it's facing. And again, it it's all about just thinking about what would happen in real life and trying to mimic that as closely as possible. And what's nice is we have this cool, like, flat design that we're playing with. Now that that's taken care of, all we have to do is go to our, you know, flattest zero position and add everything on top of the coin, which is this inner layer, which I'm doing an overlay because, eh, because... I could have probably done this in a better way, but whatever, you live, you learn. In here, it's just an overlay of two circles offset. Uh, one is darker. I think this might be black. I'm not sure. Let's see. It is black with just an opacity. And then this one is white. with an opacity, yep, it's probably so, and then overlaying it on top of each other gives us this, all right, so again, highlight, shadow, nothing, uh, did the same thing for this three, took a black one, uh, three shape layer, and then offset a white one, to give it a highlight here, shadow here. Now, this is cheating for sure because as soon as you get close, you can see these little corners right here. But for an effect, pretty convincing, right? Especially with the movement, you tend to forgive those tiny details because the overall effect works. And then same thing here. Now, all that's left to do is give it a shine, and what's good about the shine is it it informs the what material this is made out of and the environment that's surrounding it, which is always, always something that you want to do because you want to you want to imply 
as much as you can that this is happening in in an environment and this is a great way to show uh, you know a couple of different things right and again you're, when you're thinking about a coin or when I was thinking about a coin I was thinking well what do coins do they shine so I'm just add a shine just to show you real quick again it's just more shape layers just a couple of rectangle paths to create the shine and then masking out the different areas I didn't want the shine to appear and that's more of a stylistic choice but I think it uh, turned out pretty good and then just you know adding a adding an expression to control the shines movement now I just want to say one more thing about expressions and why I love them so much first of all if I press U, I have one set of keyframes and everything else is just controlled by expressions and what that does is that allows you to give over the animation to the computer so that a it's less work and eh, not really because you have to put in the expressions but B allowing the computer to animate these different parts say the the back part the shine the uh, the scaling makes it so that it is precise and that's what you want because the more precise it is the better the effect is gonna sell right so just watch that over again let's move it to the center right then with hand with a handmade uh, animation you're you're not gonna get something as perfect as this when it comes to the each each animation kind of playing off each other cool now we've definitely not exhausted the capabilities of how to create 3d effects with after effects I just hope that we were able to go through some techniques see the the way that you can approach a project here here's a secret one that I didn't prepare anything for but I was I was playing around uh, trying to have these shadows be offset in different ways and driven by this null layer right so you can see the closer the closer it is the closer and um, all we're affecting is just a drop shadow direction distance and softness but again this is this is a way that you can really play with the stuff that After Effects gives you you just have to think about what you're trying to do and then work backwards from there great I hope you all enjoyed this uh, come back to moviola.com for a bunch of free tutorials uh, and uh, and that's it bye <laughs>